Oh, hey, didn't see you there. So you might be wondering, what are we going to be talking about today? And I have a very special topic for you guys, and this has to do with backslashes in Python. And you're probably aware that you can create a new line with a backslash, but there's a lot more you can do with it. There are so many different escape sequences that you don't see being used every day in Python. And I'm going to go ahead and show you what those are and how you can use them. So first, we're going to go ahead and start with something simple. We're going to create some text of type string. And here we're going to create some single quotation marks. And as you know, if you want to use single quotation marks inside the text again, you're going to have to go ahead and use an escape symbol such as backslash two times. So you can use the single quotation mark inside. So here we can say hello. And when we go ahead and print this, we're going to get hello in single quotation marks, even if we used quotation single quotation marks inside here. So we were able to escape this. And this, of course, works also with double quotation marks if we want to use double quotation marks inside our string. So we can say double quotation mark, double quotation mark, but we'll be able to use those double quotation marks inside our string. So that was the first and most common way that you could use the escape. Now, you can also use it in case you want to escape an escape. As you can see there, we can escape the escape character and type in text. And when we go ahead and run that, we will have the escape character there. And the only rule to follow here is that you want to have an even amount of escapes or else the program's not going to know what you're trying to do. And it's also important that your text ends with an even amount of backslashes because if you insert a normal backslash, it's going to try to escape the quotation mark and you do not want that. Now, the third way you can use it is with a new line. You can go ahead and type in backslash new line, add text and it will create two lines of text. Here it's going to create the next line so that we just go to the next line. And this is a default separator for the print statement. So if you go ahead and double this, it's going to call new line automatically for us as soon as we print again. But if we go ahead and type in end and get rid of that, it's going to print it on the same line. So print does that under the hood. And it's good to know that. So in case you want to get rid of it, you just add the end there. Now we're going to get a bit more sophisticated and insert what they call a tab. So here we can do text backslash tab text. And if we run that, nothing's going to happen because I deleted the print statement. So print text, we're going to get text tab and then text again. As you can see, it's pretty useful in case you want to add a tab to your text. But now let's go ahead and create something that is far more interesting. And this is called a carriage return and it's created by using backslash R. So if we go ahead and say text backslash R and then we say new underscore text and run this, we're not going to get anything printed to the console because not all of these backslash escape sequences are supported by idle or by our Python console. So we're going to have to go ahead and go to the terminal and inside here, we're going to have to call our script by typing in python.main.py. So we're calling this script directly from the terminal and inside here, nothing's going to happen because once again, I did not print it and I need to stop removing that. But if we go ahead and run this one more time inside the console, we're going to get new text printed. And why is that happening? And pretty much what carriage return does is say that, okay, so we printed text. Now carriage return is going to move this all the way to the beginning. So when we try to print more text, new text is actually going to take over this text over here. So we can also just type in X if we want. And if we go ahead and run that in the terminal, you'll see it's going to replace the T with an X. So it's going to say XX, which I cannot pronounce. It's actually a hard one. So we can go ahead and say maybe Lext, for example, run it in the terminal, and it's going to replace the first letter with the letter we've provided. And you might see this making more sense when you have a longer text and you want to change texting to, let's say, fixing. And I know none of these are random words, but pay attention to the Python console that we just changed texting to fixing, which I don't really know what that means, to be honest. But as you could see, we were able to replace these letters over here by using a carriage return. And you can use that as many times as you like. You can go ahead and say hello here. And if we return that and run it one more time in the console, you'll see we'll get hello, which sounds like a really cool word. Now, up next, we're going to look at what they call a vertical tab. And to use a vertical tab, you'll type in text slash V and then text two slash V and then hello. And this also has to be run inside the terminal. 
chances are in the idle, in the Python console, it's not going to work. So inside here, we're going to call our script once again, and you'll see that the text is going to have these vertical tabs. So it's going to look like a staircase, and it's going to start a new line where the last line ended, and it looks pretty cool. Now going to something simple again, you can go ahead and do slash B if you want to create a backslash, and you can just run this normally because the Python console does support this, and this is just a regular backslash. So you can duplicate that three times if you just want to delete these three symbols. Now you might also notice that they have a slash F and this stands for form feeding. And it's going to work a lot like the vertical tab, but it's important to understand that they are not the same thing. Even if in our terminal, they're going to print the same thing such as this staircase over here. And it actually took me doing a lot of research to get a general idea on what this is because I couldn't find any kind of usage for this in modern day scripts for Python, especially since we're in such a modern era of computers. The best I could find is that if you were programming for a 1980 styles printer, it would eject the paper and start a new page. So it was used for new pages on the printer and the implementation depends on the printer. So unfortunately, I'm not really able to give you a good example on how this works in our Python console, but it's good to know that it's something very similar to vertical tab and it had a lot to do with old style printers. But if you have more information regarding the form feed, I would love to hear about it in the comment section down below. Now this one, I'm not going to be able to demonstrate to you directly because I don't have sound enabled in my recordings. But if you were to go ahead and type in text backslash A, this is going to provide an alert sound for your system. So if you, so if you type in text followed by that and go ahead and run your script, it's going to create a sound in your system. It doesn't show anything here on my console, but you should hear in the background some sort of alert sound. But that really depends on your computer as well. Now you can also go ahead and use this with hex values. And I'm just copying this from a website. This is going to print hello world. And these are hex values. So as you can see with the backslash, you can actually create something that recognizes a hex value. And this also works with octal values. So for example, if you go ahead and type in slash or backslash 100, it's going to print this octo value symbol here. So those were the simple ways we could use the backslash inside our strings. Now it's also important to note that we can use it also for continuing lines of code. So for example, we can go ahead and say text of type string equals, let's say text. And maybe we don't want to continue it exactly on this line. So we can go ahead and say plus backslash and continue down here text. So we continued the same line of code on a different line. And if we go ahead and run this without the print statement, nothing will happen. But as soon as we create it, we'll get text, text. And this can also be very useful if you're creating a check, if 10 is more than 10. And we can go ahead and do backslash, three is more than three, pass. So as you could see, maybe you'll have a long check and you can use this to continue the line or the check onto a different line. Now, I wouldn't recommend it for something like this because this is really highly unreadable and absolutely sucks. I mean, this whole line of code actually sucks, but, but it's good to know that you can use this to continue a logical statement on a separate line. So that covers everything I wanted to mention about backslashes. I think they are super cool and you can do a lot with them. I didn't really know half of these until I jumped into them. I don't know if I'm going to actually use these, but it's good to know that I have the option to in case I do want to use them. But with that being said, in case I missed something, please leave it in the comment section down below. Let me know what you thought about this video. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.